Hey, this is Matt once again. What about the end of the video? There's another paid request from Richard. Thank you so much, Richard. I really appreciate it. For those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for Ford versus Ferrari, or Ford v Ferrari. It came out in 2019, started by James Mangrove, which some of his films I like. I'm a big fan of Copland. Some like The Wolverine, I'm, I'm not. But this is a good one. It's two and a half hours, but I didn't feel it too much. I think because it's a well-made movie, well-directed, good-looking, captures that 60s era fairly well, has a great couple of lead characters. You got Matt Damon, you got Christian Bale. Matt Damon plays a guy named Shelby who was a driver but he got a heart condition so he had to retire but now he owns and sells out cars. At times he had to take pills for his heart condition. And you have this other guy, Christian Bale, who plays Ken. And he's a British mechanic but he's also a hothead. He's a racer. It's funny with this hot-headedness, maybe think of the Christian Bale Terminator's <laughs> Salvation meltdown. With fucking lights, you know, lights. So uh, I'm like, okay, this seems a bit more true to form for uh, Christian Bale's real-life character. But I like both those actors. I think Matt Damon, I like when films like The Martian... Christian Bale, I love American Psycho, and Equilibrium. They both did a great job in this. Uh, you also have John Bernthal. He's in it as the vice president of Ford. <coughs> the, the plot in a nutshell is... John Bernthal gets with the president of Ford, Henry Ford II, going, Hey, people are getting tired of our cars. We, more, we need more slick cars. There's this group in Italy, this group, uh, Ferrari, they have this stuff here, and, uh, was it Italy? I can't, sorry, I can't remember. I'm bad with names and countries. But remember, Ferrari, let's make a deal with them, they're bankrupt, we could buy them off. But, they said no, and then they get embarrassed. And then John Berthold tells, well, he said, you're fat, and you're not Henry Ford, you're just the second. Pretty much embarrasses him, so they get a little bit of personal vendetta going, okay, what will make a fast car that's going to beat the shit out of their car, because their cars have won the 24-hour Le Mans uh, racing competition for many years. They want to win one and rub it in their face. No money, uh, no limits on money. So they get Matt Damon to help out, and he gets Christian Bale to help out. Now the higher ups, they have a problem with Christian Bale because he's a hot head, but then Matt Damon has to fight for him. And pretty much it's a journey of these two and their group deal with these car, trying to make the car better, faster. At one point, they're going to have a run. They make Trisha Bell not race. They lose. And then Matt Damon's like, you know what? You made them scared. Ferrari. Because now they're scared of, what will you do if this time you listen, actually listen to me? And I thought, you know, Matt Damon played that well. The guy who's a little bit, you know, been around the block a few more times than Christian Bale's character. Uh, but still has a gusto of his own. And Bale, I liked his interactions with his wife. I think they worked very well together. There's a bit where she knows Bale's lying about something, so she stares the shit out of him by driving so fast. He's like, no, 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 come on, slow down, slow down. That was a fun bit. There's some nice scenes with Bale and his son where Christian Bale's explaining to his son about what's going, you know, why he does what he does. And I'm not a big car guy. I don't know shit about cars. I look at a car, I don't know jack I can barely tell you the color of the car, let alone the make or model. 
But what I did like was, again, the it was directed well, it was a good-looking film, and I liked the characters. I liked the way the characters interacted with each other. I forgot the other guy's name. He's kind of the... Not Henry Ford the second, but there's another guy who's kind of the, the bit prick in the movie. I think he was the star of Poseidon and S Stealth? Was it that guy? Who was also in the 2000s Hulk film? I, it might be him. I can't remember. Sorry, I can't remember his name. But he, he knows how to play a uh, prick well. Again, there's just some nice pieces of filmmaking. I like the idea of Christian Bale listening to the radio as the races. And we don't see the race. We just hear it from his point of view. And he's hearing how they lose. And he's like, from listening to it, oh, they should do this, they should do that, they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't do that. I thought that was a different way of showcasing those races early on. Because then, like, the last hour of the film is races. And really well done car race sequences. Because there's a race scene where Trisha Bell has to qualify to prove to them that he can do this. And then there's the, the Le Mans where there are cars crashing. There's a point where they're racing in the rain. Uh, well filmed, not confusing, not discombobulated, well filmed car chase sequences. Race sequences, I should say. Not chase, race sequences. And uh, it makes you easy to root for, you know, Christian Bale's character, and it's just extremely well shot. So, again, when you get characters that you liked, like Matt Damon, like when he's talking to Henry Ford, the sat down, it's like, yeah, we lost, but you got, I think you got Ferrari exactly where you want him. You're welcome. <laughs> like, without even being asked, like, you're welcome. There's a fun bit where him and Matt, uh, Christian Bell get into a fight. Kind of a, a funny scene, which I won't spoil too much for those who haven't seen it. Uh, I mean, did it need to be two and a half hours long? Probably not. But I can't really say I felt it compared to other movies. Uh, trying to... Th uh... I mean, I don't really have a lot of issues with it. I guess it depends. My favorite of these will probably always be Days of Thunder. Just because of Tony Scott's style and the music. Um, it has a certain sense of nostalgia for me. Plus, if you have Mellow Yellow, my favorite drink as part of it, it's nostalgia. I, I do like Days of Thunder. But, I mean, this definitely, even if you're not into cars, like Days of Thunder, it makes you believe and why these folks enjoy this sport so much and you really feel that there's a bit of a love letter endearing quality to the film being made does it feel there's no politics there's no agenda stuff it's just filmmaking And again, I don't, <clears throat> I don't really find much issues with it. Like they, they pretty much stick to the title at hand. There's not a whole lot of times where they deviate, and it's like, oh, here's Matt Damon, and then here's Christian Bale. Like each one's used as well as they should. It doesn't like become this different movie. Say, so, wait a minute. There's not like 50 or 15 or even 5 subplots that pop up. But wait a minute, I thought this was Ford versus Ferrari. That was about the... It doesn't do that. It's, it's with the story at hand. I think that's why the pacing helped. Because we were with them each step of the way. Like I said, the last hour is those two races. And you just really get involved... Like, this is how you do it. I kind of wish, in retrospect, this was like a film, like, driven 
with Sylvester Stallone and Rennie Harlan. Because you had Burt Reynolds and you had Sylvester Stallone. If they did that movie, that Burt Reynolds was the Matt Damon role and Sylvester Stallone was the Christian Bale role, Driven could have been a fucking awesome movie. Sally wasn't. Because the idea with this bullshit Tip Pardue guy, this other bullshit, and that's a movie that didn't feel like it knew what it was. Like, it wants to be rocky with Tip Pardue, but then it wants to talk about the other stuff here, but then it wants to talk about with uh, this other girl, and, uh, like, it wants to go, it wasn't nearly as focused as this. And it does, in retrospect, when Burr Reynolds was with us and, you know, when Hemworth was still, and I just, man, those two, if they did a movie like this, it would have been great. And you really buy the friendship that grows between Damon and, and uh, Christian Bale's character. Especially when, with, at the end, I'll say that. And, yeah, it's one of those scenes where... Like I said, I, <clears throat> I don't really have much issues to say about the film. Like this, it's not usually my movie to watch, my kind of movie. Racing and stuff. But, I mean, it was well done, it was effective, and... And, uh... I can understand why people liked it so much. I mean, the, the running time is daunting, but once it got settled in, I'm like, okay. It doesn't dawdle too much, and gives the right amount of time to certain scenes, and wasn't too bad at all. So there you go. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.